There was this a story. one you were geeking out about. I was really yeah. geeking out, too, because <laughs> this is something that I, I talked to Steve Gibson um, the last time I was, uh, I was hosting Security, Security Now, now. with him. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it was sort of like, well, I'm sure there's a way to do it. Uh, I just, I haven't really figured it out yet. Well, some people did. Oh, uh, this, of course, this has to do with the crack that was revealed yesterday in um, in the uh, uh, ASLR, is a, yeah, the uh, so. Addressing Space Layout Randomization. Okay, so ASLR is one of these things that we've sort of grown accustomed to having. Mm -hmm. uh, you younger kids out there, you won't <laughs> remember this, but there used to be a time yeah. when memory was written contiguously. What? I know, kind of crazy, right? So <laughs> I, I think in order for to, uh, us to understand this crack, and we will be getting to the, the, the streaming in a bit, but I really want to geek out to this. With, with Ryan for <laughs> please, just a bit. please, please geek please. out. Uh, to understand this, let's jump back to the 90s. In the 90s, I was using Windows XP. We hadn't ever heard of, uh, of ASLR, and the whole idea was when the operating system loaded, it loaded in the first bit of memory that you had, and then programs would load up Contiguously, right? They would just it would just keep filling until you filled up all your memory. Right. That was that's normal. That's kind of how you would write things down. The problem with doing that is it makes it incredibly easy to own your operating system. How so? Uh, well, all I'd have to do is use a buffer overflow. We've talked about buffer overflows. Buffer overflows are, for example, if I'm allocated 64 bytes of memory and I write 128 bytes of memory, and there's nothing that stops me from doing that. There's no check mm -hmm. to keep me from doing that. What will happen is I will fill up my 64 bytes and then I'll take another 64 bytes. Mm. And that other 64 bytes, since the memory was, was written sequentially, it will overwrite what was in the next set of memory cells. Uh, okay. Okay, well, the problem with that is, if I know that Windows is loading up in this part of the memory, and I get allocated a, a memory cell that's right here, mm -hmm. and I overwrite uh, by 64 bytes, I can now write into space that was protected, space that was supposed to be taken up by a crucial component, or mm -hmm. maybe even the, the holy grail, the part of memory that's being used for code execution. That's when I get what's called arbitrary code execution. I, as an attacker, mm -hmm. can put instructions in that space, I can overflow and put instructions in, in that space to make the operating system do something that it doesn't want to do. Uh, okay, okay. So it's not, it wouldn't just like crash the system. It's that you can actually take over and make The first couple changes. of times it will crash the system, absolutely. Yeah. Because, I mean, when you first, when I was first playing around with this, you would write into that protected memory and you would basically turn it into garbage instructions and the computer would just go, oh, I give up. Out. Yeah. But once you start figuring out what's happening and you, you can start targeting where you're writing in the memory space, if you can find that place where it executes code, you can put an entire instruction wow. and, or entire set of instructions and you can just do it again and again and again. And basically, I now am the super user. I huh. can tell the operating system to do more than the operating system can do. Wow, and so this new attack though, it targets something else. It targets the, ASA, uh, the ASLR function. Okay, so yeah. let's, let's look at my very wonderfully drawn <laughs> Representation. Wow. For, 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 forget this for a bit. This is, is a Triscuit on there? <laughs> <laughs> this is what your memory looks like. So these are the sequential cells of your memory, right? right? So it would be writing here, 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 here. It would just keep going down the line as the memory fills up. In the old way of doing it, back in the 90s, mm -hmm. because it was writing sequentially, if I chose this spot and I overflowed, I, I, uh, I did a buffer overflow, so I wrote more than I'm supposed to be allowed to, right. I could say take the four cells that I'm supposed to be taking plus the next four cells, if that's where code is executed, I can now make the computer do something I want it to do, Ooh, right? right? So they developed a technique back in, I think it was first announced in 2001. It was part of a, a Linux project. Hmm. Uh, they were looking for a way to stop this, to stop simple buffer overflows from being able to remotely execute code. Okay. okay? They came up with the Linux PAX project, and the Linux PAX project came up with address space layout randomization. <laughs> Very simple idea. The execution's kind of tricky, but simple idea. Instead of writing to contiguous memory uh, cells, so next to each other, yeah. what if every time the computer starts, I randomize where stuff goes? Yeah, it'd make a Almost impossible, right? Well, I mean, not to take possible, over. very, very, very difficult, difficult yeah. right? Because now I can't just assume that my buffer overflow is going to go into the memory space because right. I don't know where the, the code is being executed. Right. It's not foolproof, as we know, because computers are still getting owned 20 years later. <laughs> but what happens is, remember how you said what happens when a computer crashes? Yeah. That happens more than it gets owned. Okay. Because if I overflow, 
I could be overflowing the code execution area, or I could be overflowing someone's Word document. I right. could be overflowing the the operating system and making the entire thing crash. And I'm guessing every time you turn off the computer and turn it back on, it it's randomizes again. It's going to re-randomize. Yeah. It's going to re-randomize. And so there, you could still own computers, but the percentage of success of every attack went way way down. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. And we we were pretty good with that. I mean, if you're if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, it's no longer what it used to be. It used to be if you took a Windows XP box and you put it on the open internet, because mm -hmm. we, we did this, we tested this at Interop, every box was owned within five minutes. Every box. Because it's just scrubbing, right? There's like right, yeah, programs they, just scrubbing for that. You have people who are just scanning the, uh, the, the, the uh, address range of Interop at yeah. all times looking for open ports. And when they found XP, there was a plethora Ooh, of open yeah. ports. <laughs> they launched their favorite buffer overflow uh, uh, attack, and next thing you know, the operating system now belongs to them. Wow, okay. okay. That doesn't really happen anymore. I mean, you could still happen, mm -hmm. but more often the computer will crash because of ASLR. Well... <laughs> That's done now, Until thanks to now. some wonderful researchers, and I do mean this. This is this was serious research, and yeah. I have nothing but respect for this. Uh, a a group called is it uh, Viewsec? V U S E C. It's a Dutch group of security researchers. They figured out a way to defeat ASLR by exploiting the memory management unit. Hmm. Okay. So think of this. With my AS, with my my memory being written like this. Right. The processor still needs to understand, still needs to know where everything is. Right. It can't guess. It has to know exactly where it's executing code. It needs to know where data is being stored. So there's a map. There's a page map that allows the CPU to say, oh, if I, if I need this data, it's here. If I need that data, it's here. Right? Yeah. It's, just a, it's, it's a table a of contents. Yeah, OK. Right? Well, what, what modern CPUs will do is because that map always has to be accessed, Rather than storing it in main memory, I mean, it is in main memory, yeah. but they keep a copy in the CPU cache. The CPU cache, if anyone here who has played with hardware knows what this is, yeah. it's the memory that's on board. Mm -hmm. So like uh, I buy an i7 and it's 3.9 gigahertz and yeah, two megabytes or three megabytes, right? right? That's the cache. That's the memory that's built into the processor die ridiculously fast, right. incredibly fast. It's more expensive to make, mm -hmm. but because it's actually on the same die as a processor. It doesn't have to go through the, the bus like it does through memory. So the, it's exponentially faster to draw instructions from the CPU cache than from main memory. Mm -hmm. So what they've done for performance is they take that map and they put it in the CPU cache. Okay. It totally makes sense, yeah, right? Yeah, definitely makes sense. I mean, what you want... logical. Precisely. What do you want in the CPU cache? In the CPU cache, you want the instructions that are going to be called most often. Right. And, and you always need quicker. the map. Yeah. Because you can't do anything without the map. Mm -hmm. Problem. I'm guessing it, like the map's not not like an encrypted kind of thing. Oh, it can't be encrypted. It I mean, can't. the CPU has to be able to see it. But yeah. I mean, here's here's where I think the the genius of this crack comes into play. And I just this is, again, this is why I think these guys are awesome. I, I want to meet them and shake their hands one day. Yeah, they figured out that they could utilize that to figure exactly where in the memory their program was located. Hmm. And this is how they do it. If somewhere here. In, uh, let's, let's do this. Somewhere in here, <laughs> in the CPU cache, there is the, the, uh, the page map, right? Right. The, the table of contents for my memory. Well, the CPU needs to be able to access that. What I can do is I can overwrite. I can't read the CPU cache. My programs can't, by design, I can't read it, but I can write to it. Hmm. I can write to each cell, just individually. Write to the cell, wait. Write to the cell, wait. Write to the cell, wait. And what it's waiting for is how fast does the CPU respond. Hmm, okay. Okay, cuz CPUs are very quick. Yeah. So they'll respond almost instantly. If I overwrite a cell that contains a part of the page map, mm -hmm. the CPU struggles a little bit because what it has to do is you just overwrote the map, it now has to go back out to main and memory get and again. get another copy of it. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. So now I know it's, it's slowed there. down. There's a piece of the page map in there. And you're probably talking like slow down the fractions of a so, yeah, like nanoseconds. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's next to nothing, yeah. but, but it's measurable. It's yeah. detectable because CPUs are very, they're very uh, consistent. Yeah. I mean, you'll get the same response unless suddenly it has to do some extra instructions, and those yeah. extra instructions are to go back out to main memory and get another copy of the map. Right. Okay. So now that you've located where that is on the CPU memory, right. what can you do? Here's the thing. So I keep going, and I find all... I have to actually do this attack four times. I have to find the four different 
um, uh, pieces of the map that I'm going to have in there, the boundaries of the map, mm -hmm. and that will give me the offset. And the offset is what determines the randomization in the memory. Oh, and okay. so now that I have the offset, I can find out exactly where in memory my, my program is, is located. Yep. I, and if I, can, if I know where my program is written, I can now figure out where code is being executed. I can now put random <laughs> instructions into that area of memory, and I own the system. So it's not random anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, it's it's owned. You're, yeah, you're, you're owned. Done. Yeah, that's and crazy. The, the thing, and this is what makes this so beautiful. It sounds complicated, but it is a super super simple attack. Basically, it's I do something and I listen. Yeah. And I do this enough times, and I get enough data to know where in memory I should be writing my attack. It's that's, it's it's actually brilliant. Yeah. Now this is how bad it is. They haven't actually released the code. Because they're like, uh, this is too dangerous. <laughs> this is a, it's called a deep bug. Mm -hmm. It's in the hardware. It's not a software patch. This is the hardware right, that they're right. attacking. Right. There's, I mean, you can't patch that. No. Uh, and they had a list, right, of all the CPUs affected. It was they, like the last CPU. Yep. Every CPU, it seemed like, in the last well, few years. Every <laughs> CPU is going to be using cache. I mean, yeah. it's everything from Intel. It's AMD. It's Samsung. It's Qualcomm. So, I mean, mobile processors, desktop processors, server processors. Yeah. If you use cache, and I can write to your cache, I can run this attack. Hmm, that's a little frightening. <laughs> it, it, it's frightening, but, you know... <laughs> but it's really cool at the there, same time. There are a couple of ways to harden your system. Yeah. Uh, the way that Apple is choosing to do actually they haven't announced it, but I'm pretty sure I figured it out. Yeah. All they're doing for their Safari browser, because uh, this attack can be run in JavaScript, by the way. Because it's that has access to the hardware, yeah. That yeah, sense, it has yeah. access to the hardware, but uh, so, which means I can be attacked going to a website. Which, yeah. That's cr cr uh, Bad. ridiculous. I think what they're doing is they're actually inserting artificial delays. Oh, right, right, so right. They're so they're basically can't... fooling the malware mm -hmm. into thinking that's where the page map is. It's not. Right. Uh, but that's not a fix. No, that's And nice. that actually slows me down. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, the, the fix would be don't put anything in the CPU cache, but, but then, then I take a huge performance hit. That's no bueno. Oh, man. So how, how can you get around this? How can you... It's, they, have to, they have to fix it in the next generation of hardware. Although, right. I, I mean, this is, it's not as simple as, oh, they made a mistake. It's this is someone who's taking advantage of the fact that the processor has to process. Right. And right. the processor always needs to process, so I don't know how you fix that. They're taking advantage of the fundamentals of how computers work. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't but, know. Yeah. Don't, don't freak out. I mean, yes, yeah. this is, I mean, to some people, this is going to be scary. I find it absolutely fascinating. Read really up cool, on man. this. This is, I mean, this is a great chance for you to find out exactly what ASLR does, which is it's wonderful. And then it's, it's another chance for you to figure out how these security, security researchers actually figured this out. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't even think to start measuring response time of the processor because to most of us, response time is, is immediate. Right. It is. Yeah. Oh, that is really cool. And as far as learning about the CPU cache and stuff, like I always knew more was better, but I didn't actually yeah. know why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. And uh, we'll we'll follow the story. I, you know, we again we don't normally do this on Know How, but this story was so incredible. Yeah. And so just really kind of genius that we had to geek out. That's pretty smart.